Hi, DIY Jeff here, and I'm gonna show you how to fix rock chips in your paint. Here's a look at the products that you'll need and some of the supplies you'll need to do this project. The first thing you're gonna need and the most important is a duplicolor pen, applicator. This is the fix all in one, scratch fix all in one. And uh, I'll explain later uh, where you can find this at your uh, local auto parts store or online. But you'll need this, that's going to be starting with, then we've got some CLR for prepping the surface after we get it scratched up a little bit, uh, a, a rag to wipe off the CLR, or to apply the CLR, gloves, because whenever you're working with chemicals, you want to make sure you wear uh, protective uh, gloves on your hands to protect them. Uh, then when we actually apply the paint, we have a some type of little tray here. Doesn't matter what this could be, um, maybe even the, the top of a lid. A fine tip paintbrush for applying the paint. Some mineral spirits that you can use to clean your paintbrush. Sandpaper, and this happens to be for automobile use. It's um, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500 grit sandpaper. It's a uh, one piece of each all-in-one package I got at Walmart. Some microfiber cloths that you're going to use when you apply your rubbing compound at the end of the project. And then also for applying some hard shell turtle wax, the uh, final seal and protection. I wanted to show you the pen that we're going to be using, the Duplicolor pen. You can find these at Advanced Auto Parts stores. You can find them at Amazon or other places online. You don't have to use this brand. You could also find the paint from your manufacturer itself. If it's Ford, Honda, whoever, just contact the, uh, the dealer nearest you and they can help you get your paint code matched up. But you can also do it yourself and that's what we're here to do today. So right here you can see it has the paint code. This happens to match my uh, 2005 Honda CRV, and let me show you where you can find the paint code on your vehicle. So I found my my paint code in the driver's side door jam, and it's in with all of the uh, information about the tires, um, your VIN number, and my paint code on the Honda is here at the very bottom, NH578. You can also sometimes find this information in a tag under the hood. I haven't opened this up yet, so I'm going to do that here in front of you, and we're going to go through some of the, the specifications on this and what it's supposed to be able to do, see how easy it is based on what they tell us. So it opens up. I'm presuming this piece here is probably just for uh, steady of hand against the vehicle as you're working. Um, so this does, I think, no, uh, yeah. That comes off with that. Okay, so we have here, we have the top part. And if you can see that, it's a very hard piece of material. That's made for cleaning the area, scraping away bubbled paint, scraping away rust. You'll see me uh, do that a little bit coming up. Uh, and then you have here, this is your fine tip applicator. And that's how you'll dispense your paint you push down on the tip, and then the uh, as you're turned over with the pen, push down on the tip, and the paint comes out. Also, uh, down at the bottom, this or excuse me, back at the top, this does unscrew if you want to use just a paint brush. This also has the paint in stored on a reservoir, so for larger areas, you can use that brush. We're not going to use that brush for our application because I think it makes it a little bit more of a mess than we want to make. Um, but you could do that. And then down at the bottom, this comes out and this is your, uh, your clear coat. So this screws off. There we go. Your clear coat stored in here. Obviously don't turn it over like I just did prior. Uh, and that's what we're going to do as the last step for putting the clear coat on. So let's get started. So I have a couple of paint chips that aren't real deep, but they do go down to the primer. And you can see here, I got one there, one there. 
that's what we're gonna be working on today. So I'm gonna start cleaning those up. I'm gonna take the uh, pointed white end of the tip and I'm just gonna use that to kind of rough this up a little bit. Getting any kind of paint that might be loose to come loose. You can see a little bit came loose there. This one has a bit of rust, so we're going to be trying to scrape some of that off as well. All right, I took my CLR and I dabbed it on this rag here. I'm gonna work with this in, working on cleaning up the rust. take a few applications to get this off. The CLR instructions say not to leave the product on what you're applying it to. So it says to uh, wash it off uh, with cold, clean water. Uh, I've dampened up a rag here, so I'm gonna dampen this up here and get that CLR off of there. Use the dry side, dry it off. Now I want to remove this applicator top, reveal the pin. I'm going to put dispense a little bit of this down in here so I can work with it a little easier. So I'm just going to depress. As you can see, some paint came out. From When I'm working with that paint, I want to dry off this tip. I don't want this tip to have paint stay on it uh, and clog up the, the hole in the end of it. So I'm going to uh, dry that off and then I'll show you how to apply. I'll take my paintbrush and I want to get the, uh, the tip of the paintbrush wet. I want it to be come to a point so that when I get paint on it, it's only one tiny point that's going to uh, apply it onto the surface. That gives me a little more precision when I'm working. So I'm gonna dab the paint, starting off with just a tiny bit on the end of my brush. Don't be afraid if you get too much on the end of your brush to clean your brush off. It's much better to start over with a clean brush than to get paint in areas you don't need it. I don't want to lay a, a lot of paint down. I want it to be kind of a thin layer at first. 
and it can be applying this in layers. I'm not sure how many it's gonna take. It might take uh, three or four, we'll see. You're gonna wait, drying time is, oh, roughly about 30 minutes in between layers. And if you need to, when you, when you run your hand over it, just kind of touch it with your finger, with a dry finger, and see if it's tacky or not. Or a, a, a clean microfiber cloth, something that can, can test it. And if it has any lumps in it, then it might be a good idea at that point to take your, your thousand grit sandpaper uh, and do a wet sand on it and just kind of level it out. You don't want any bumps in this at all or it will be pronounced by the time we get to the very end of the process. Now you want to take some mineral spirits here, which I don't want to leave hanging over the car in case I drop it. Just standard mineral spirits or acetone. And you want to clean your paintbrush and uh, the applicator. See, I got it fairly clean, just a tiny little bit on the end. You gotta be very careful on these fine brushes. You can't work with them too hard. You gotta be a little gentle. So I'm okay with a tiny bit on the end there. But you're gonna wanna clean in between each, each application. It's been 30 minutes and it is uh, tacky. Uh, well, just barely tacky to the touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the next coat. I looked at it. There's no lumps or bubbles in it, so I feel safe uh, not having to sand. So I'm going to go ahead and take my paint applicator, depress again, not taking too much, and remembering to clean off the tip of the paint applicator so it doesn't dry. This stuff dries pretty quick. Uh, just even the five minutes or less I used uh, applicating on the first two scratches, it was already starting to tack up a little bit on me. So don't dispense too much out of your applicator. Just take little bits at a time. I wetted my paintbrush tip again, making it a little easier to apply. See on the second application here, it's getting on a little whiter. It's not so clear and see-through. All right, I'm gonna let that one sit and work on the next one. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. So we're gonna wait another 30 minutes. Working on coat three now. Coat number four, and I believe this is going to be our last coat. So I think four coats is gonna do it, but I am concerned about applying the clear coat. It looks a little rough, even with dabbing it with just that, that tiny little paintbrush. I can't imagine what it would look like if I had used the applicator that came with it. I'm decided I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and in the morning I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand it with a thousand grit sandpaper to get it a little bit more smooth before I apply the clear coat and the finishing touches. Let the paint dry overnight, now we're going to wet sand it with uh, 1000 grit sandpaper. So it's not looking too bad. 
can see all the dullness uh, around the sides here. That's going to uh, go away when we put the gloss on it. Of course, when we get the camera up on it real close, it makes it look a lot worse than it really is. I think when we get the gloss on there, unless you were really looking for it, you probably wouldn't even see it. Next, we'll put the gloss on. So using my Duplicolor pen on the bottom of the pen is the twist off for the gloss applicator. I want to apply this everywhere, and you can't really see it in the video, but everywhere that I sanded. When, you, when you're looking at it, you can see a dull, matte kind of finish and it's not glossy so I want to make sure I have my gloss over all those areas and this will get, end up getting sanded as you can see I'm trying to smooth out the coating It should somewhat self-level from what I understand. Guess we'll see after the video is done. All right. And we'll do that with the other one. So this is what the gloss looks like after about 20 minutes after application. It did fairly well level out. There are some little ridges here and there. Um, this was the other one. That one has some bigger ridges in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait uh, 24 hours. It just says that you need to wait, if you're going to wet sand it, to wait 24 hours between your clear coats. It does want me to put on three to four clear coats. I'm a little worried that that's going to raise it up too high. So I'm going to wait, sand it tomorrow, probably use 1500, 2000 grit sandpaper, and see if I need to apply another clear coat after that. We're looking at the next morning now. You can see it's pretty rigid when you get up on it real close but if you pull away it's really hard to hard to tell the gloss is like that uh, hopefully we will get that worked out when we sand it all right we're the next day now after the gloss is dried it's had a good amount of time to cure and i'm going to use uh 2000 grit sandpaper to start with here and see if that's gonna do it for us. I don't wanna start with the 1500 and have it take off too much and then have to reapply. It's important to wipe off the water every few seconds so you can see what your cloth looks like. there I think uh, probably try to maybe just buff that out and see how that turns out I'll do that on the, the rest of them
So I buffed this down with, or excuse me, sanded this down with the 2000 grit sandpaper. There's a good shot. You can see a little bit of uh, gloss inside the sanded area. Those are dips and crevices. If I try to get that gloss out, it's not gonna look real good because um, I'm gonna have to really get down on it with the sandpaper. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is and use my buffing compound and buff it out. There's my other one. So we're gonna uh, buff that out. I got my buffing compound, a clean microfiber cloth. It's important that it be clean. Microfiber is the best. I wouldn't suggest using cotton, but maybe you can. I'm gonna get this, uh, it's, it's a hard substance, so I'm gonna get some on my Roll it around, get some on there. I'm just gonna work this in. Doing everything in circles. And I'm looking to go over the entire area. It's okay to overlap into some of the other paint. Um, this is just gonna help buff it out. Just make sure the area is clean. I'm putting, applying a medium pressure. I'm not working on it extremely hard, but I'm also not just lightly rubbing over it. Getting it in and around. Working it in. All right, let me use a clean side of this. Dry, or not dry, excuse me, just rub off the excess. And uh, looks like I'm probably gonna do one more bit on it, but that's uh, that's what the end result's pretty much gonna look like. It looks looks like um, not 100% satisfied, but let me uh, let me buff it out a little bit more and see if we can get it looking just a little bit better. All right, quick wrap up summary of the project. In the end, I'm pretty happy with the result, having never done this before. I think it turned out pretty well. From a distance, you can't even see there was a rock chip over there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a side-by-side -side comparison here for you so you can see the before and after. Some takeaways from the project. If I was doing this again, I wouldn't sand so far around the the rock chip area and I would also not gloss all those areas I sanded I think I would have been okay just rubbing it out with the rubbing compound and still had the end result be the same um, but anyway for less than 30 bucks still pretty happy if you like this video go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel DIY Jeff for more DIY projects